Hello and welcome to Quantum Advisory's investment podcast for quarter three of 2023. In this presentation, I'll provide a brief market summary, discuss the economic developments which occurred over the quarter, and provide an outlook for what's to come, considering some of the possible short and medium term expectations. Firstly, I'll provide a brief summary of the investment market over the third quarter of 2023. I'll begin by addressing economic news from the quarter. The yields of government bonds in the UK and US have breached multi-year highs as sustained levels of inflation have triggered large sell-offs in global markets. In both the US and the UK, the long-term cost of borrowing has reached multi-year highs. The UK government in particular found themselves borrowing large sums throughout the coronavirus pandemic, which was extended to cushion the blow to consumers from high energy prices over the last year. The European bond market has also taken a large hit as Italy's plans to increase borrowing were announced. Bond prices dropped sharply and the Italian 10-year government bond yield rose to just shy of 5%, the highest level in a decade. Prevailing high levels of inflation remain a concern for policymakers and market participants alike. The UK entered the quarter with a 7.9 inflation rate, which has gradually reduced and ended the month of August at 6.3%. Despite cooling off a little, inflation remains a far cry from Bank of England's 2% inflation target. Over the quarter, interest rates have continued to rise, with many investors losing their initial optimism that rates will be lowered. The underlying stickiness of inflation has influenced monetary policy to remain tight, although positive signals of declining inflation allowed the US and UK to maintain rates in the September review, the possibility of further rate rises should not be ruled out. In the EU, despite positive movement, rates were raised to 4.5% in mid-September, the highest level since the euro was launched. Within the political sphere, Rishi Sunak has announced a major U-turn for the government's climate commitments in an attempt to garner support before the next general election. It was announced that the UK would push back the deadline for the ban on sale of new petrol and diesel cars and the phasing out of gas boilers which prompted negative responses from the automobile and energy industries, though the PM remains absolutely unequivocal about sticking to the commitment to reach net zero carbon emissions by 2050. This move was condemned by other members of the Tory party, with the previous Prime Minister Boris Johnson commenting that he cannot afford to falter now. Heaping more uncertainty into the market could further drive up prices for the public and jeopardise the UK's delicately balanced economic state. After much speculation, Rishi Sunak has formally announced that he is cancelling the planned HS2 link from Birmingham to Manchester, but the government would invest the £36 saved from HS2 in other transport projects across the whole country, including a number of road schemes. In November, the US government narrowly avoided a federal shutdown after both House and Senate agreed on a short-term funding deal. The bill ensuring funding until the 17th of November received a large amount of support and was signed into legislation by President Joe Biden just minutes before the deadline. A shutdown occurs when both chambers of Congress are unable to agree on the approximate 30% of federal spending they must approve before the start of each fiscal year on the 1st of October. This comes as Americans' approval ratings of Congress and the federal government remain at near historic lows with the majority saying they have little to no confidence in the future of the US political system. This reflects poorly on the political stability in the US and has adverse effects across markets. Looking now at the central bank rates graph on the bottom left, monetary policy remains tight across most major economies, and despite pauses by the Fed in the US and Bank of England, there remains the potential for further rate increases before the end of the year. In the Eurozone, the rate of inflation in August fell to 5.3%, with forecasted signs of further reductions in September. This could potentially pave the way for the European Central Bank to pause their rate-hiking regime. Inflation in the UK remains more resilient than other developed economies. Some of the driving factors behind this inflationary pressure include the UK's greater reliance on gas, the surging cost of food and its tight labour market, which has been driving the value of wages. As a comparatively large importer of food, the effects of Brexit have heavily influenced this factor due to tighter restrictions, administrative costs and regulatory checks. Now we'll give a more in-depth economic update with particular focus given to the UK. This slide displays fixed income activity, specifically in relation to the UK market. 
The fixed income market has generally struggled over the third quarter of 2023. Interest rates have continued to rise, pushing yields higher to the detriment of bond pricing. First, we will look at the yield curve graph. Over the third quarter, the yield curve remains inverted, which has historically been an indicator of looming recession. An inverted yield curve with rising real yields creates a disincentive for banks to lend. This is because short-term rates are higher than long-term rates, meaning loans are generally less profitable. However, whilst the curve remains inverted, it shows improvements on the last quarter and is trending flatter. If this continues, a recession may be avoided. The changes in interest rates are a key driver to the struggling returns for the UK's fixed income market. On the other hand, UK cash delivered positive returns on both the quarter and the year as a consequence of the high interest rate environment. As can be seen from the inflation graph, inflation in the UK is trending higher as of September compared to June across all maturities. However, the implied forward rate reflects positive signals that the market expects a significant reduction in inflation over the medium to long term. From the corporate bond graph, it can be seen that yields have generally increased over the quarter in both corporate bonds and gilts. However, corporate bond markets have outperformed government bonds as spreads have narrowed across both investment grade and high yield bonds. This suggests that defaults are low and company balance sheets remain robust. Looking first at the equity versus cash graph, heading into the third quarter, the bullish sentiment that previously lifted stocks out of a bear market faded. The optimistic rally driving the previous half-year gains diminished as hopes of a pivot towards lower interest rates fade, with many investors grown cautious and opinions of a higher for longer rate environment becoming popular. Despite this, from a macro perspective, many strategists are of the opinion that the economic cycle has proven itself more resilient than the consensus expected, and have adjusted their projections away from a recession and towards a possible soft landing ideology. With this in consideration, global equities experienced an overall decline over the quarter, generating losses of 2.5%. Markets started the quarter off strong in July, however this was not sustained as markets contracted over August and September, with global equities ending the period on a loss. The main area of strength for many markets was the energy sector, which rebounded as the price of oil rallied over the quarter, as can be seen in the commodities chart to the right. However, due to the tailwinds mentioned above, weaknesses were mostly concentrated in utilities, real estate and consumer discretionary sectors. UK equities, on the other hand, posted modest gains, a recovery from the losses of the previous quarter. However, in totality, the UK economy continues to track sideways, as little growth has been achieved since the start of 2022, and is around 0.2% smaller than its pre-pandemic peak in 2019. In particular, the UK's relatively small holdings in the tech sector have been an opportunity loss, as the spike in AI stocks have provided large yearly gains. Despite the advantage gained from a relatively weakened US dollar over the quarter, emerging markets have underperformed over the longer term horizon. This is due to comparative US dollar strength and the consequent high cost of imports. Under the commodities section, you can see the price of Brent crude oil is trending higher over the quarter. Oil prices in particular suffered a sharp increase after Russia and Saudi Arabia cut oil production. The price of gold remains at historically high values, reflecting its utility as a portfolio diversifier to hedge against inflation. The strong inflationary environment generally increased demand for gold and oil, which may have also pushed prices higher. Other stimuli which could have influenced commodities include the continuation of the conflict in Ukraine, the Israel-Hamas war, the US regional banking crisis, and the long-term repercussions of COVID-19. The VIX volatility index, often known as the fear index, is an indicator of implied expected volatility of the US equity market. Historically, normal volatility ranges between 15 to 20 percent and a level above 20 is considered to be high, although during times of market stress this has risen to 50 plus. Over the past quarter, the volatility index has increased a little but remains in the normal ranges. This uptick may be due to catching sentiment of rates remaining higher for longer and expected rate increases, alongside an increased level of global conflict and political instability. 
However, it is also supportive of the view that the US market is more resilient than expected and lends weight to the theory that the US will have a soft landing rather than a recession. Only time will tell which one of these theories is correct. One thing that can be stated with certainty is that the volatility has significantly decreased over the last year and has reverted to its historical average. As you can see from the equity chart, most markets saw mediocre returns over the third quarter. The market was led by Japanese equities, which returned 3.1% in a continuation of a strong year to date, demonstrating notable resilience in spite of rising interest rates and bond yields. Despite this, yen weakness remained a prevailing economic factor, with exchange now lurking near 150 to the dollar, down 12% for the year. Officials commented that depreciation was beginning to become uncomfortable. The UK market was the next strongest regional performer rebounding from weakness over the three-month period and returning 1.9% over the quarter. This was driven by UK-quoted diversified energy and basic material groups. A number of consumer discretionary areas also recovered well, the house builders in particular. Inbound and merger activity among small to mid-cap stocks acted as further support. Despite a strong year, US equities recorded more modest gains over the quarter, This was a reflection of generally poor investor sentiment, optimism that the era of tightening monetary policy was over, withered over the quarter, and was lost altogether over August and September as higher rates were introduced, though energy stocks were relatively resilient over the quarter. European equities fell over the third quarter, as worries surmounted surrounding the negative effects of interest rates on economic growth, with rates reaching the highest level since the creation of the Eurozone. Despite this, data released at the end of the period showed that Eurozone inflation slowed to a two-year low of 4.3%, down from 5.2% in August. Emerging markets had a strong start to the quarter, but ultimately ended the quarter with mediocre gains. A key factor exerting negative pressure on gains was concerns that the US economy will continue to raise interest rates, influencing a poor risk appetite. Also, the cascading effects from China's lacklustre economic recovery and weak external demand weigh heavily on emerging markets. While most sectors underperformed, others posted small gains, such as Colombia, Hungary and the Czech Republic. The most notable returns were from Egypt and Turkey, the latter of which saw positive influence from two rate rises which were initiated over the quarter and considered a sign that the central bank was becoming more hawkish in its policy approach, which was supportive of investor sentiment. On the right-hand side of this slide is the International Monetary Fund's growth forecast for the year ahead. The IMF forecasted that global growth will fall from 3.5% in 2022 to 3% in both 2023 and 2024. Developed economies are set to see especially pronounced growth slowdowns from 2.7% in 2022 to 1.5% in 2023. The dampened outlook reflects tighter global monetary policies which are necessary to bring down inflation, the ongoing war in Ukraine and the fallout from the recent deterioration in financial conditions. The recent resolution in the US regarding the debt ceiling crisis and also earlier in the year the strong action of the authorities to contain the turbulence of the US and Swiss banking crisis have reduced immediate risks of financial sector turmoil which in turn moderated adverse risks to the outlook. However, as it was last quarter, the balance of risks to global growth remained skewed to the downside. For example, inflation could remain high and potentially rise even further should shocks occur. This exacerbation could occur from intensified efforts in the Ukraine war and more extreme weather-related events, which could possibly trigger more restrictive monetary policy. Further, Financial sector turbulence could materialise as a result of increased policy tightening by central banks. In these scenarios, global growth could decline further and the risks of a hard landing for global economies increases. On the other hand, inflation could fall faster than expected, reducing the need for tighter monetary policy and domestic demand could prove more resilient. To touch briefly on industrial unrest and labour shortages, this appears to be a particularly UK-focused headwind, driven by the two separate issues of Brexit and the early retirement of many workers, both leaving behind large gaps in the workforce which need to be filled. 
However, there is some positive evidence to suggest that some early retirees have or are intending to return to work. The IMF forecasts global inflation to fall from 8.7% in 2022 to 6.8% in 2023. This can be mainly attributed to a fall in commodity prices, whereas underlying or core inflation is proving sticky and expected to fall more slowly. These factors represent significant short to medium term headwinds, which we will continue to monitor in the coming quarters. Moving now to our outlook as at October 2023, where we will explore the reasoning behind Quantum's asset class views. Quantum remained neutral on developed equities. The effects of tightening monetary policy across most major economies has cooled inflation. However, rates remain persistently high, with potential risk of recession still on the horizon. However, developed equities can hedge against inflation, and though it remains persistently high, it is trending lower and predicted to continue to fall closer in line with central banks' targets in 2024. Though in more recent news, the Israel-Hamas war has caused a spike in oil prices, which will further fuel inflation. We believe stock selection is key given the stagflation and geopolitical risks, and favour companies with more resilient pricing power and strong supply chains. Quantum is also neutral on emerging market equity. Despite the advantage gained from a weakening US dollar, emerging markets have continued to underperform. While emerging market inflation is considered to be past its peak, significant risks still remain. Rising tensions between China and the West could lead to a shift in production and supply chains, which seems unlikely to be solved in the near future. Also, China's debt and property market problems continue to intensify, with the government yet to take aggressive stimulus measures. But consideration must still be made in terms of regional selection, as regions that are less exposed to war and inflationary pressures are better positioned for the future. With regards to UK government bonds, we have a positive outlook. Although long-term interest rates remain at elevated levels following the significant rise in 2022 and 2023 to date, gilts remain a good match for defined benefit pension scheme liabilities. Despite being at their highest point since the 2008 financial crisis, gilt yields look attractively priced, especially given the level of Bank of England rate rises that are priced in. Though downside risks do still remain, given the level of uncertainty surrounding inflation and the future path of the Bank of England's monetary policy. We also have a positive view on global corporate bonds. Despite headwinds that are present, such as rising inflation, higher global interest rates and economic uncertainties around global growth, we believe short-dated credit investments remain compelling and has the potential for outperformance relative to their government counterparts. They also remain a useful source of income for pension schemes. Quantum has a neutral outlook on global property as inflation, rising interest rates and economic headwinds have increased supply and placed a downward pressure on valuations and returns. Shorter term issues such as valuation markdowns and rental renegotiations, whilst sector specific, will continue to weigh on demand. Opportunities in industrial sectors such as warehousing have been key return drivers during the switch to e-commerce. We remain cautious on shorter lease properties where tenant quality and flexibility remain key. Finally, we have a positive outlook on global private markets which remain attractive and provide access to illiquidity and complexity premiums. Private credit has become more attractive as global yields and credit spreads have risen. They can also provide an effective, non-correlated hedge against inflation due to the floating rate coupons. It also offers a senior position in the capital structure and high levels of income with low volatility. The transition to a low carbon economy and the energy crisis has led to opportunities within infrastructure, both equity and debt, particularly in renewables and clean technologies. Infrastructure also provides stable inflation mitigating return characteristics. Diversification across asset classes, regions, vintages and issuers remains key. Thank you for listening to Quantum Advisory's quarterly investment vodcast. We hope this edition has been informative and provided you with a useful update on the current economic climate. If you would like to discuss any of the topics raised in more detail, then please get in touch with your quantum contact. Once again, thank you and goodbye for now.